This Donghua begins by showing that thousands of years ago, six races were fighting endlessly. One day, a warrior chief appeared who braved the entire army to challenge the heroes of the six races. He held a ritual to gather spirits from around the world to defeat the six heroes. Moving on to the next scene, Lao Bai, a pharmacist, was talking with Ying Ju, one of Ho's four great vampires. They discussed a plan that had been put together for 3,000 years. It was about an array or an aura that collected life after death. Lao Bai planned to remove the aura from the living creatures and store it in a pill. After revealing the array's retrieval style, he said he would hide the array in remote places so that it would not be known by his clan. They would set out to save the array. In a village, people were seen running scared. There was also a family from the bull race. They are Uncle Lao, Aunt Ai, and her daughter, Niu Niu. The chaotic village atmosphere made Uncle Lao check what happened. At the same time, the villagers began to fall and faint. Soon after, Uncle Lao saw a giant who was destroying his village. Then he was unconscious because of the fog from the demon. When Aunt Ai and Niu were about to escape, they were also hit by the mist, and Aunt Ai fainted. Meanwhile, only Niu was now conscious and looking at the giant. She recognized the giant and called him brother. Turns out it was only Li Shi's dream, Niu's brothers. He was a fisherman of the human race fishing on the lake's shores. He often dreamed the same thing for many years. Suddenly, Li Shi saw that his trap had managed to catch the fish he had been looking for days. When he was about to get the fish, he was attacked by two demon fish. Li Shi used his torch against the two demons and finally defeated them. Li Shi cast a water god to spell around his boat and sailed to get a fish of seven colors, capable of creating illusions. Because colored fish did not live in one place, catching them was challenging. He was determined to catch the fish because he would participate in the election of a martial arts master. When he saw the fish coming out of his trap, he immediately jumped up and caught the colored fish again. After being caught, the fish instantly shrank, and he put it into the place he had prepared in the boat. On the other hand, it appeared that Uncle Wong was worried about Li Shi, who had not returned because tomorrow was the deadline for the election of the master members. Meanwhile, Li Shi, who was in his boat, fell asleep and was carried into the fish's illusion. He dreamed of meeting the giant who was constantly attacking him. He tried to attack the giant, but all his attacks didn't work. Even the giant swung his sword, and Li Shi attempted to hold it with his arm while convincing himself that he would not be defeated by the giant. The giant then said he would enter Li Shi's body so his soul would never be lost. Afterward, the monster entered the body and occupied Li Shi's necklace. In the morning, Li Shi woke up and reached Linhai City. At the same time, in the city's harbor, it was seen that there was a master who first came to the town, Master Yipin, which was a level 5 master. Elsewhere, Uncle Wang was still waiting for Li Shi to come. At last, he saw Li Shi arriving and leaning on his ship. Li Shi then showed the colored fish to him. Uncle Wang then exchanged the fish for proof of sale and asked him to bring it to Head Zhang because he would help him. Li Shi hurried to meet him. At the same time, there was a big boat leaning, and the ship's owner was a beautiful woman from the human race, Miss Shi. She got off her boat by riding on a magic stone and transformed into a magic doll that went back into the pendant she wore. The magic stone is a demonic stone passed down from generation to generation. There was also a male doctor, Fu Sheng, a cultivator who became a doctor to treat humans. Not far from there, there was a girl from the fox race, Ching Ye. She lived on her own and had no clan, and was known to be very nosy. After stealing Fu Sheng's medicine, Ching Ye ran away. Fu Sheng, who saw Li Shi from a distance, asked him to catch the thief. Li Shi immediately ran to Ching Ye, who was now pretending to be asking for help and said he didn't want to marry Li Shi. Miss Shi, who was there, felt that Ching Ye had to be protected, so she stopped Li Shi. Accidentally, Li Shi held onto her body. She got angry and slapped him. Meanwhile, there appeared to be another ship that would lean on that carried a giant demon from the demonic shark race, Xiao Dao Dao. When it landed in the harbor, the demon tried to attack the people there. Luckily, the two guards managed to control the demon. On the other hand, Miss Shi still did not accept Li Shi's doing. Li Shi convinced her that it was all a misunderstanding because he was chasing after a thief. But she couldn't believe it and kept attacking him. While Ching Ye managed to escape, she met Xiao Dao Dao and accidentally opened the demon seal. Xiao Dao Dao raged and made his two guards fall. Fu Sheng, who was there, blocked the demon attack with his power. In Linhai City, a horse demon, Ma Bo, was with the wealthiest man in the city, Yue Zhang of the human race. Yue Zhang asked if he had found the fish hunting expert's niece. The colored fish he caught would soon be brought before Ma Bo. Ma Bo promised him that if the colored fish were in his hands, his two sons' future would be guaranteed. After that, Yue Zhang went to Uncle Wang's shop because they had both agreed that Uncle Wang would give him colored fish. The scene turns to the harbor. The raging Xiao Dao was stopped by Li Shi, who easily defeated him. Fu Sheng treated the wounds of the two shark demon guards by himself. Li Shi then met with Uncle Wang, who told him to hurry away from there. However, Xiao Dao Dao suddenly rose again, and now Li Shi was facing the demon with Miss Shi. During the fight, Xiao Dao Dao took out a blue stone, one of the four magic stones. 
After absorbing the stone's energy, the shark demon turned strong so that Li Shi and Miss Shi were overwhelmed by the demon. Since Li Shi was in a hurry to go to a master match, he finally used the power of the necklace he wore and defeated Xiao Dao Dao with a single attack. Miss Shi, who did not see the fight, was surprised when she came back and saw that someone had defeated the demon. Li Shi immediately left because the match registration time was about to end. While Master Gu, who was the head of the underground broker, was waiting to hear from someone who carried a colorful fish from the human race. Wan Zhang, a police chief from a rhinoceros race, told him not to worry because the fish would arrive soon. Master Gu also said that Li Shi could not take the registration mark to compete if his mission was not completed. In a suburb, Uncle Niu was seen bidding farewell to his family to go on patrol on Mount He, along with his friends Mo Ren, Yai, and Chuan Zai. Uncle Niu and his friends walked across the city border. The guard there asked why he and his friends were always on patrol. Uncle Niu explained that Li Shi was busy registering for the match, so only they had time to patrol. After Li Shi's attack, Xiao Dao Dao seemed helpless. His two guards intended to tie him back. However, because one of the guards was terrified, Fu Sheng helped tie and seal the shark's demon. In a hurry, Li Shi ran so he would be on time to register for the match. Suddenly, he accidentally hit a mysterious cultivator who immediately forgave him. However, when someone else bumped into the mysterious cultivator, he did not hesitate to smash it with his finger. In the city center, Chief Zhang was still waiting for Li Shi's arrival and began to worry because the registration would soon be closed. Shortly, Li Shi reached the front of the gate, where there were many people, and hurried to meet Head Zhang, who was already waiting for him. The registration was a selection ceremony by King Kui of Dalu. The ceremony was conducted once every five years to select talented young people attended by masters from various hermitages. Head Zhang then asked for a piece of evidence exchanged for colored fish. Li Shi gave it to him, and he took it and went to tell Master Gu. Li Shi was hopeful that he could register and win because it was his chance to leave Linhai City and join the hermitage. Head Zhang provided evidence of the sale and purchase that Li Shi gave to Master Gu. He exchanged it for registration proof which Head Zhang then carried and handed over to him. Li Shi seemed very excited and very grateful. Head Zhang asked him to register immediately before his time ran out. When Li Shi entered the registration area, two young men who had also registered for the match, San Qing and San Ming, came over to Li Shi. They challenged Li Shi to a fight. However, due to the imminent completion of the registration, he refused and chose to register first. Meanwhile, Miss Shi tried to find Li Shi in the market and met with Qing Ye. She said that Qing Ye had deceived Fu Sheng and stole the cure. Qing Ye pretended and spewed blood. However, Miss Shi knew she was lying, so Qing Ye fled immediately. Shortly after, Miss Shi came to a first-class hotel there. She asked the waiter to prepare a delicious meal for her. Uniquely, the waiter mentioned the food menu while singing and dancing to keep Miss Shi entertained. Li Shi, who had finished registering, was delighted and it went smoothly. Xian Qing and Xian Ming returned to Li Shi and said he would enjoy his time before fighting with them in the arena. Li Shi didn't care about the two young men's provocations, and he left. Whereas Xiao Dao Dao appeared to be carried by some guards and would be handed over by Linhai City Police. However, on the way, the troop was intercepted by a race of demonic armadillos, Jie Yu. Jie Yu said to unleash the shark demon, or he would forcibly release it. After paralyzing the two bodyguards by sinking some of their bodies into the ground, Jie Yu approached Xiao Dao and unsealed the fasteners. However, after being released, Xiao Dao Dao did not thank him. Instead, he attacked him. There, Jie Yu explained that his arrival was sent by Master Hui Sei. Xiao Dao immediately obeyed Jie Yu because he was terrified of Master Hui Sei. Meanwhile, the two bodyguards who were initially going to take Xiao Dao Dao to the police turn were pretending to be dead in front of Jie Yu so they could save themselves. In the forest, Mu Mu, who was from the tree demon race, and a girl from the murky demon race, Guan Guan, talked to a man from the poisonous snake demon race named Hui Sei. The injured Hui Sei was asking about Ching Ye's whereabouts. Guan Guan replied that Ching Ye was looking for a cure for him. Soon, Ching Ye came to give medicine to Hui Sei. After taking medicine, he seemed to recover. Hui Sei was a demon who claimed to be a descendant of a dragon hated by other demons, so he hid in the mountains. When he had recovered, his face changed and emitted an evil aura. Ching Ye was surprised because she helped Hui Sei and wanted to learn how to make medicine. Elsewhere, Li Shi met Guan To, his old friend. Guan To warned him not to cause trouble with the two boys who had challenged him before because they were both from large families. Eventually, the match began, and it appeared to be attended by a mayor named Zhu Sheng Guan of the human race. The mayor greeted Master Ma, who was sent specially by the government. Master Ma said he would be attending an event created by the host and would like to see the talents of young people in Linhai City. The first match began with the first participant entering the fighting area. It was Feng Mi, the head of Tian Xin of the Bee Island, the human race of bees. His opponent was Su Yan, the head of Yin Yang Temple, the human race, while the third person was Pu Ling, the head of Chongqing Temple, a descendant of the island dragon. 
While the two bodyguards who were still stuck on the ground seemed happy after seeing Fu Sheng's arrival, the two guards sought Fu Sheng's help to save them. After helping them, he asked who had released the shark demon. The bodyguard replied that the shark demon was carried by the armadillo demon. Hearing that, he left the place. In the match area, Mayor Zhu Sheng Guan said that there was one master who attended the match. The master was always present every time Linhai City organized a game. He's Dia Ying, a butterfly demon from Bai Hua Hermitage. Soon, Mayor Zhu Sheng Guan announced that the match was about to begin. When the drum was hit, the test arena suddenly appeared from the ground and floated in the air. Linhai City officials then explained the competition rules, which consist of three stages. The first one was referred to as the machine round. Three candidates would compete simultaneously, as the time was the burning of one incense. The match started straight away. Meanwhile, on the mountain, Uncle Niu and his friends were on patrol. Suddenly Mo Ren, who was behind, was attacked. Uncle Niu went to check it out and saw that Mo Ren had been killed, hanging from a tree. He was furious and asked the attacker to come out and face him directly. Soon, a giant snake attacked him and the other two friends. Luckily, Yai survived and tried to escape. After Yai escaped his attack, the serpent turned into a human being. It was Huey Sei, who had previously recovered after taking medicine. According to him, the drug was terrific because it healed almost all the wounds on his body. Several young men named Lu Renjia, Lu Renyi, and Lu Renbing were preparing to compete in the game area. The three of them had to cross a prepared obstacle. However, they were still trying to get through the barrier, as well as the following teams who continually failed to pass the block prepared by the Linhai city government. At a diner, it was seen that Uncle Lao Yuan was drinking. Soon, someone told him that Li Shi had been fighting with a shark demon and was following the Linhai City match. Hearing the news, he seemed very angry as Li Shi attended the match. He then went straight to catch up with Li Shi drunk. On the other hand, Miss Shi was still looking for Li Shi and heard the conversation. She followed him after discovering that the man was Li Shi's uncle. Yai, who escaped from Huey Sei's attack, was seen running out of the forest towards Linhai's city gate, shouting for help as his friends were attacked by a snake demon. He kept running to the city while screaming that he saw a snake demon. In the arena, it was the deer race that would advance into. A girl from the deer race was Li Shi's childhood friend, Lu Xiao Qian. She was with two twin brothers, Yu Ban and Yu Yan. From the audience, Li Shi was surprised to learn that Lu Xiao Qian was also in the match. At the same time, Huey Se came to the very crowded area. He liked the place because he could absorb much spiritual energy. By moving his fingers, Huey Se could gather all the spirits there. Yai was still screaming while raging in the city. Fu Sheng approached and calmed him using the spell he had mastered. He said that Yu Yi was traumatized by what happened to him. Head Zhang came there, and Fu Sheng told him the shark demon had escaped. Head Zhang then reported and discussed the strategy with his superiors. Lu Xiaoqian, trying to overcome the obstacles, was about to be taken down by the two twin brothers in the same group. Luckily, he managed to avoid it and complete all the obstacles to the finish line. Xiao Dao Dao was now at the bottom of the ocean to make the cairn rock that Huey Sei ordered. Elsewhere, Jie Yu, or the demon armadillo, was also doing his job by stacking some stones in the city to make it a rock cairn. Jie Yu was forced to obey Huey Sei's orders because his friends, including Mu Mu, were threatened by him. After stacking the stones, Xiao Dao Dao and Jie Yu placed a shining stone on them. In the old days, Huey Sei wanted to convert the spirit energy of the dead into medicine pills. After the last shining stone was laid, all the grass around Jie Yu turned yellow, absorbing all the spirit energy. Similarly, at the bottom of the sea, Xiao Dao saw the stone he had placed begin to absorb all the spirit energy. Xu and Yu was astonished to see the energy that the stone was gathering. At that time, he remembered all his friends who lived in the forest and intended to take the stone he was supposed to hand over to Hui Sei. With his desire to become powerful, Xu and Yu picked up and swallowed the stone, causing the energy of the armadillo demon spirit within him to increase. When Xu and Yu was about to leave the place to save his friends, he saw many bodies lying around because of what Hui Sei did. He decided to take another path. However, the bodies revived by Huey Sei suddenly pursued him. It was time for Li Shi to compete in the arena, and many people there supported him. Among the crowd, it appeared that Miss Shi was also there. Inside the city, Bai Luo Luo, a woman from the tiger demon race, Bai Yin's daughter, was looking for someone. She looked innocent because it was her first time out of her palace. He Zhang, who was in the government office, was surprised because he only found out if Uncle Niu had taken his friends away to Mount He, and now only Yayi managed to return from the mountain. He intended to go to find Uncle Niu with his men. Li Shi, who was in the match, didn't look serious about facing the obstacles. Uncle Lao Yuan arrived in the middle of the game, and Fu Sheng soon appeared. Uncle Lao noticed that Li Shi faced all those obstacles so quickly that he finally finished the match. Even though Li Shi managed to pass the round, Mayor Zhu Sheng Guan disapproved of it and intended to abort Li Shi because he did not compete seriously. However, Master Ma said there was no need to drop Li Shi because he thought Li Shi was enjoying the match. The scene turns to the forest. 
Mu Mu, who mined the stone, was found by Ching Ye to be cold and sick from exhaustion in the mine. Ching Ye then took him out to warm him up by the campfire. Mu Mu was exposed to cold poison from Hui Se. At that moment, he kept calling out to Jie Yu, whom he had already considered a brother. On the other hand, Jie Yu, who managed to escape the pursuit of the undead, was seen in the forest. At that time, he felt that his friend was in danger and intended to take out Hui Se so they could survive. He hurried to find Hui Se. Meanwhile, Mu Mu started to wake up after his body warmed up again. Ching Ye then asked Guan Guan to hide Mu Mu in a safe place because he would go to the city and find a cure. Bai Luo Luo's tiger demon has reached downtown Linhai. He then made himself invisible to steal people's things there. Soon after, he approached Miss Xi and took her stone necklace without being seen. Knowing that the necklace had been stolen, she went after Bai Luo Luo and asked to return the necklace. However, he did not want to return the necklace, so it upset her and fight with him. With her strength, Miss Xi managed to tie him and defeat the tiger demon. He apologized, and she could take the necklace back. At the same time, Li Shi turned out to have passed the first round test. He came down from the arena and intended to approach Fu Sheng. However, after seeing him with Uncle Lao Yuan, Li Shi lowered his mind and left. He didn't want to be scolded by Uncle Lao Yuan for joining the match. As Li Shi walked away from his uncle, his necklace accidentally pulled each other towards Miss Shi's necklace, which was not far away. The two necklaces attracted each other as if they were enemies. Li Shi's necklace, which was from a monster, collided with the energy of Miss Shi's necklace, the five-colored godstone as the sky and earth spirits. Due to the constantly colliding energy, the monster in Li Shi's necklace unleashed its power, so their necklaces did not pull each other anymore. In ancient times, when the great witch Niwa used the five colors godstone to make the sky, Shu and Yuan's sword fell on one corner of Shanghai world. Meanwhile, the fragments of Qi Yo, the warrior or the giant that attacked Li Shi, entered the stone fragments because of the sword. From then on, the stone of the gods and the warrior fragments lived and died together. After the power of their necklace was released, Li Shi chose to leave to avoid Miss Shi. However, Miss Shi followed him instead. He asked her to stop. He also said that it was good for them to end the dispute, and she didn't want further conflict. Suddenly, Li Shi panicked at the sight of his sister, Niu Niu, who was not far from there, would be hit by a cart. With the power of her stone, Miss Shi can stop it and save Niu Niu. Li Shi thanked Miss Shi for helping his sister. Soon after, Li Shi and Miss Shi drove Niu Niu home. On the way back, Niu Niu fell, and Li Shi immediately helped his sister. From this, Miss Shi could learn that Li Shi was a brother who cared very much about his sister. Miss Shi then bought Niu Niu sweets. At that time, she asked why she called Li Shi his older brother when they were both from different races. Niu Niu replied that she had seen Li Shi since birth, and Miss Shi said Niu Niu should not call him her elder brother because of their race. Niu Niu asked why she should distinguish races. After the three sat down to rest, Niu Niu's mother came to pick up her daughter. The scene returns to the arena. The first half was over, and now the masters had also left the venue. Meanwhile, Master Ma met Yue Zhang, who reported that he had obtained a colored fish and was waiting for Master Ma's next order. Master Ma told him to do as he planned and left Yue Zhang, who was still paying his respects to him. From behind the gate, Fu Sheng inadvertently heard the conversation about the fish that Li Shi had caught. Fu Sheng also felt something was wrong, so he sent a message to Li Shi. At the same time, Fu Sheng realized that the dried leaves that were flying had been absorbed by his energy. He also looked for the energy source, found a cairn rock, and destroyed it with his spell. He also saw traces of the demon armadillo that had absorbed the spirit's energy. Jie Yu was forced to absorb the spirit energy to repay Hui Se. However, he knew he wasn't strong enough to defeat Hui Se, so he intended to meet with Xiao Dao Dao to gain greater power. Whereas Li Shi and Miss Shi were still seen fighting when a letter flew and was captured by Master Ying. As he approached Li Shi, he suddenly saw the shadow of a black figure inside Li Shi's body and handed the letter to him. After reading it, Li Shi hurried to say goodbye and met Fu Sheng at the training ground. Meanwhile, Miss Shi knew Master Ying and asked why he was in Linhai. He instead requested Miss Shi why she was playing with someone like Li Shi. He laughed as if mocking Miss Shi, who looked annoyed and left. Soon, Master Ying returned for a walk in Linhai City. Master Ying then used his strength to make the people around him statues. He also said that after decades of training, he finally returned to feeling impatient to look forward to something. According to legend, when Ying Go was about to destroy the world, he was sealed by the ancient gods. To escape from the seal, it was futile to separate his spirit into four wandering without direction, and one of the spirits was Master Ying. Meanwhile, Fu Sheng followed Armadillo's demon's footsteps into the forest. He knew the demon's footprint was not the same because the monster might have just gained enough power that he could not control it. He had to quickly find the demon before it became more difficult to beat. In the forest, Ji Yu attacked Xiao Dao Dao. He brought Xiao Dao Dao and Hui Se into conflict so that the shark demon intended to kill Hui Se. Soon after, Ji Yu and Xiao Dao Dao went to see Hui Se. There, Hui Se discovered that Xiao Dao Dao wanted to attack him. He was quickly killed by Hui Se with his immense strength. 
At the same time, Huey Sei also knew Fu Sheng was eavesdropping and hiding behind a tree. He immediately let out his attack on Fu Sheng, and they fought. Due to Huey Sei's immense strength, Fu Sheng was injured and tried to trick him into running away, knowing he wouldn't win against the demon. In the last scene of the Donghua, Fu Sheng manages to escape, and Huey Sei orders Jie Yu to go after him. Then Jie Yu obeyed his master's orders. The moral value we can learn from this Donghua is don't tell people about your plan. You only need to show it.